Hey everyone, just a short video. I'm going to show you how to uh, prepare images uh, for compiling a time lapse or hyperlapse. Uh, I prefer to work in Bridge, Adobe Bridge, to prepare the images. However, you can do this same thing with Lightroom, and I'm sure there's other ways to do it as well. But what I want to do is edit one of these raw images and then apply those settings to the whole batch uh, automatically so I don't have to adjust each one. <clears throat> and so that all of the edits are uniform across all the images for the for the time lapse. So I have the images here in in Bridge. I'm gonna right click on the first one and say Open in Camera Raw. And then I'll just make my adjustments uh, how I normally would to any still photo. Let me bring up the shadows a little bit, um, add some clarity. Uh, something like that we'll call good. So then we'll hit done. And the so now the raw settings have been changed on just this one photo. If we right click and go to develop settings now, we can copy uh, settings from that. We can copy just the raw settings from that photo. So then once we've copied, we're gonna select the remainder of the images in the sequence, right click, go back to develop settings and paste settings. And we're just gonna paste all the settings. Uh, you can see this will transfer any of the white balance adjustments and all these other uh, raw image format settings. So we'll hit okay. And this will take a little bit of time you can see it's applying uh, those raw settings that we set on the first image to the rest of the images. While it's doing that, we'll go ahead and open After Effects. I prefer After Effects uh, for compiling the images into a time lapse. Again, there's lots of other software packages you can use to do this. Uh, and After Effects is pretty expensive if you buy it standalone. However, if you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, you can get all of the apps in the Creative Cloud uh, for one monthly payment. I think it's $50, uh, but there are other discounts available depending on what package you buy. You could always sign up for the Creative Cloud for one month and pay the fee and use it for a month and then cancel if you're finding you're not using it. But now in After Effects, we'll go ahead to Composition, create new composition. The default settings here look good. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is the standard H HD definition, and we're going to use a 24 frames per second frame rate, and hit OK. And now we want to import the image sequence, so let's go to File, Import, File, and navigate to the folder where our images are, select the first one, and you want to make sure you have Camera Raw Sequence checked down here, and hit Open. It's going to open up this Camera Raw dialog box again. If you're using After Effects, I think you can skip the bridge step at the beginning that I showed and just change your raw settings here, and this should apply those settings to the entire raw sequence. However, if you're not using After Effects to compile your images, you may want to still use Bridge to change the settings on all your images uh, because whatever package you're using to compile may not, uh, may not have this raw image support. So anyway, we'll hit OK. So the sequence is loaded. We're gonna right click on it and go to interpret footage, main. And we want, and we want the frame rate of this sequence to match the frame rate, frame rate of our composition. So we'll change this from 30 frames per second to 24 and hit okay. Now we'll just drag this image sequence over onto the composition. And you can see that the still image frame is quite a bit bigger than the composition frame, so we'll need to scale that down to fit. And this is because a still image from the 5D Mark III is quite a bit higher resolution than, than just regular video resolution of 1080p. So we'll scale that down. And 
and we can kind of scrub through the frames here and see what the positioning will be like. I think we'll want to move this down a touch. Now technically this is not a time lapse, it's more of a hyperlapse, meaning that I moved the camera uh, between shots quite a bit. I was actually walking and just hand holding the camera and uh, focusing on a point on the Eiffel Tower restaurant there in Vegas, taking a picture and then walking two steps, taking another picture, walking two steps, taking another picture. And uh, when you string these together, it kind of gives you the same feel as a time lapse, only the movement comes from uh, the camera position traveling through through space. So when you do a hyperlapse like this, and especially if you're hand holding it, you're gonna get quite a bit of camera movement that needs it to be smoothed out. And so in After Effects, we can use the warp stabilizer effect to help smooth out that motion. So we'll crank the smoothness up to 100. And then we'll let the warp stabilizer do its job and that'll take a little bit of time, so we'll let that render. Okay, after the warp stabilization is complete, we're gonna go ahead and export this clip. Uh, I can see that it is two seconds and 16 milliseconds long, so we'll keep that number in mind. And go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And then if we click here on Best Settings, we're gonna change the duration down to the two seconds, 16 milliseconds, hit OK, OK. On the lossy list, change the format. I'm gonna be editing in Final Cut Pro, and Final Cut Pro really likes to use uh, ProRes, so we'll switch to that codec, hit OK, OK. And then we're gonna to output to uh, just someplace on the desktop and name it Vegas Hyperlapse and then go ahead and hit the render button when that's done rendering you can see the result so you can see that turned out pretty nice it's a nice fluid hyperlapse movement towards the the Eiffel Tower restaurant and that's about it I can import that clip into my editor uh, I use Final Cut Pro 10 and you can incorporate that into your project and go from there. So that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to check out the blog post. I've got quite a bit of other information, uh, more in-depth information about creating time lapses uh, on, the, on the actual blog post. Uh, the link will be in the description of this video, or if you're watching this on the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. And that's it. Have a great day.